Hello runners, welcome to Reflections, the RHWB podcast. My name is Sonali and I'm really excited about today's episode and you're going to soon find out why. But before we get into that, let me give a little bit of background for those tuning in for the first time. So as part of this podcast series, we bring you various interesting stories about our runners' journeys and also some very interesting discussions uh, with some experts and professionals uh, about various aspects related to the science and art of running. Uh, if you haven't checked out any of our previous episodes, I highly urge you to go back and watch them. Uh, we've got some amazing content and I'm sure you're going to learn a lot from each one of them. All right. So coming back to today's topic, today we're going to focus on a very special group of runners. Uh, you know, inspiration, it comes in various forms from very various directions, from our seniors, our friends, our peers, colleagues. But there is a very rich, untapped source of inspiration uh, right amongst us. And that is our younger generation, our children, our junior runners. You know, for this season, season 11, we have about 830 odd runners, out of which 10% are kids. That's right, about more than 80, 80 uh, we have 80 kids uh, who are uh, part of um, this season's cohort. So, uh, and many of these runners actually have been part of multiple RHWB seasons. So imagine like 16 weeks every season over multiple seasons. That's some serious commitment. Now, today we are bringing you some of those success stories here. And uh, we have the parents of some of, you know, those awesome junior runners here today who play an important role in sparking and cultivating and nurturing that curiosity and passion of this beautiful sport of running. Again, I want to thank all of you in advance for taking the time to be with us here today. And uh, it's truly going to be my privilege to be speaking with you. I personally know I'm going to learn a lot from um, all three of you. So without any further delay, let's start with some introductions. So Amrita, let's start with you. Uh, why don't you tell us where you live, um, you know, uh, about your children, how many seasons you've been with RHWB. Let's start there. All right. Hey, thanks, Sonali. And thank you about, you know, thinking of me for this podcast. It's special for me because it's related to my kids. So very happy to be here. Uh, so, hello runners, hello my friends. My name is Amrita Lokhande. I live in Edison, New Jersey. Uh, I've been associated with RHWB as an active runner since season four. Uh, COVID times, so best time to start running. Uh, both my kids, Bihan and Ryan, are runners as well, part of the amazing RHWB community. Uh, my older one, Vihan, he is 11 years old. He has been part of RHWB since season five. Wow. Um, yeah. And as part of his running journey, he has done uh, a half marathon at the age of nine. I guess he's still the youngest half marathoner of RHWB. Uh, and he's the Commitment Pillar Award winner as well for that same yeah. season. Uh Post that, he's done multiple 10Ks. Uh, he's been focusing on his speed 5K since last couple seasons. Um, and yeah, I mean, he, he loves being here. And my younger one, he's still five. Uh, season 10 was his first season uh, when he completed his first 5K. I think he's the youngest runner of RHWB community. Uh, wow. So, <laughs> yeah. We've got so, sitting family here, huh? <laughs> oh my god <laughs> yeah we we try i mean not to set the records but you know just pushing the kids to do something something you know so yeah so that is about me my family my husband is also a runner he's also part of rhwb so yeah nice nice uh, thank you that's about us lovely thanks amrita uh Bharat? hello everybody um Thanks, uh, Sonali, for uh, having me uh, for this podcast. It's a, it's re it's really a privilege to be part of this amazing community. Um, so my name is Bharat. Again, I'm Ranit Bharat Kumar's dad. Um, the whole family is basically into RHWB, and we just love every moment of it. 
Uh, Ronit basically is 10 years old. He just turned his double digits uh, this January. Uh, he has been with RHWB uh, since the last season. So this is his second season. Uh, he's started with 10K. He's continuing with his 10K for the season as well. Um, he's really looking forward to uh, extending it to the next season uh, to a half a marathon. Um, he's very energized. Um, my daughter also is part of uh, RHWB community. Uh, she's taken a little bit of a hiatus because she joined a dance program, which is taking a lot of commitment, uh, but she's she's excited and she's certainly going to be back uh, to this running program. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. Nice. Hello, Sam. Yes, hi. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, I My name is Sam. I live in San Diego uh, with a beautiful uh, two kids and my wife. Uh, three of us, not four of us, but three of us are... Um, We've been with RHWB for a long time. I started in season fifth. In fact, this was a boon during pandemic, um, which actually helped me survive the pandemic. Uh, so me and my family are grateful um, to Bala and the team as well uh, for this. So that's where my journey started. My, my job requires a lot of travel. So um, earlier, even though Bala had talked about it, I couldn't start it until... Uh, fifth season when pandemic hit and I was tired of sitting at home all the time. And um, I eat, and I have never looked back since then. Um, and when my kids saw me running and, and coming home happy with this runner's high and be in good mood and talking to them, they got excited. They said to my elder one, Ishan, which was, he was about uh, eight, eight and a half that time. He said, can I also join you? I said, sure, come on over. So he joined me and later on my little one who was five at that time, she joined as well. Um, I have done a few half marathons uh, since then. My son, who's 13 now, Ishan, he has done, I think, uh, one 5K and then a few 10Ks. I think five or six seasons he has done it. I think more like five seasons. And my daughter, um, she has done four seasons of 5K. Um, so, yeah, that's where we are. We all are taking break this time. Uh, it has been challenging with my elder one's uh, multiple commitments in Science Olympiad and Cyber Patriot and all those things. So, wow. yeah, it was a challenge. So he took a break and then uh, my little one took a break. Oh, Bhaiya has stopped running. So maybe I'll take a little <laughs> bit of break. <laughs> And I was traveling uh, all the time. So yeah, we, we as a family, we are on a break, but we plan to be back in the summer, all three of us. Wow, amazing. So it must feel really good, right? When you are known as Vihan and Ryan's mom, Ronit's dad, oh, yeah. Ishan and Samhita's <laughs> uh, dad. I'm Absolutely. sure that, that's some great feeling, yeah? So, uh, but let's, let's now about this time, how it, how it started, right? What sparked that curiosity? Um, so, you know, how about uh, Bharat, you start by telling us, like, how did uh, Ronit get into running? What what happened there? I mean, absolutely. Uh, so the running in the family started with my wife, Shilpa. Uh, she's been in the podcast uh, before this. Um, so the dad basically was inspired by uh, the three S's, that is Shilpa, Suraj and Shankar, who is uh, our coach Shankar. Uh, wow. We have a very close-knit community here. It's uh, a lot of people in the community run uh, run down here. It's uh, it's basically a lot of inspiration in the community. Um, so basically looking at dad and mom, um, you know, coming back from these runs and we did a lot of conversation. There was a lot of talk about, you know, running, what's the plan? Uh, so the kids got really involved with that and, and looking at how we used to come back uh, you know, looking forward for the runs. And, you know, once you start getting these highs, you really get into it. And, and you know, you're setting your goals. Uh, so that basically inspired. And and Ronit, he's always been like, you know, high energy and very athletic. Uh, it's just that he was just waiting for a chance to kind of, uh, you know, basically when can he join us? So I think he started joining us, you know, for runs. Uh, and officially it kind, kind of coincided with the season start. And then he was officially part of the season. So that that was how he kind of started um, into this running program. And uh, he has never looked back. Amazing. Amazing. 
So, uh, yeah, I mean, and it, it, it's great, right? When, you know, without even telling when the child kind of takes up what you have always hoped for them to do, I think it's, it's a great feeling. Um, how about you, Amrita? How did Vihan and Ryan start? I'm sure Vihan kind of started and Ryan just wanted to follow his brother. But uh, so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, with us, uh, Sonali, both me and Rusha, my husband, we are runners. Uh, in our household, we are very much focused on, you know, exercising, uh, you know, uh, having an active lifestyle, doing something, being outdoors whenever possible. Um, either it could be anything, hiking or just go for a run or go for walks or anything. And Vihan, as a child as well, he has always been athletic, very athletic. Um, he is into multiple things. And I feel looking at us, running came very naturally to him. Uh, it's not that since day one, he was this Vihan that, you know, we see right now. It needed a lot of, you know, uh, a little bit of push, a little bit of convincing, plus motivating him. At times, you know, uh, being a little strict that, you know, this is your schedule, follow it, you know just to make sure that he sets that rhythm uh, within him, right? So uh, that's how he got into running. And it's, I mean, if you look at it, couple seasons, first couple seasons were a little challenging for him because 16 week schedule is not a joke for, you know, a seven year old or an eight year old. So, um, but still, you know, just motivate, keep on motivating him, uh, make sure that, you know, he tries to follow the schedule that really helped him set, you know, a mindset that, okay, this is what I like and this is what I want to do, right? So that is how Vihan got introduced to running. Ryan, obviously, as you said, he follows his brother. So he always used to see Vihan getting medals, Vihan, you know, people talking about him and he used to say, when will I get my own medal? So, uh, I mean, at that time, he was just three and four. So, I mean, we were not sure, uh, you know, whether it's the right time or not. But uh, after talking to his pediatricians and, you know, taking some advice, we thought that maybe let's try it out if he wants to do it. If he, if we feel that, okay, he's able to do it, then let's enroll him and see what he, how he takes it. So that's the way he got introduced to, you know, uh, running as part of season 10 and, yeah, he, he, he did well. He did okay. So I know it's a long journey for him, but uh, let's see how he takes it further. Oh, great. And, and you know, you, you said a very important point here, right? Like, it, it's good that you didn't assume that, yeah, he's too little to do this kind of a run, right? You always you yeah. know, thought that, yes, it is possible. Yes, we'll, we'll check it yeah. out with his pediatrician and all, whether this kind of, you know, continuous running 16 weeks is, is fine, but then... Yes. It's great that uh, you thought of it as a you know a possibility, and yeah, I mean it's it's really awesome. So great, <laughs> Sam. What about Ishan and Somyas? How did they start? I knew you mentioned it was thanks to the pandemic, but uh, let's yeah, talk about so, a specific time when. <laughs> sure. So um, so Bala and I go way back. Uh, so I have uh, known about Bala's club when he first started uh, training kids, small kids. And Bala and I go way back because we were uh, classmates in undergrad okay. uh, in, in India. So, um, and, and we are also now, uh, we, we are in a way work partners. We, we work together in a company. We started the company together as co-founders. So as he started this group, he used to share with me time to time. And uh, during pandemic, when the shutdown happened, I said, man, this is driving me crazy. So he said, why don't you, well, I'm starting this time for adults. So why don't you join as well? I said, okay, great. At least it'll get me out of the house. There's a reason for me to get out of the house. And uh, it has been a blessing in a way that it just uh, changed my health habits and uh, fitness that it brought was amazing. Um, and obviously my son saw this and uh, he was also getting little um you know uh, staying at home all the time uh he said he wanted to join me and then i heard Am amrita talk about uh, medals so the medals is the one what so excited samia to join samia saw the medals like ah, i can also want to get medals and uh, so she started running with her brother 
So that's how we all got into it, uh, running. And, um, you know, it, it has been one of the best things that has happened to me in my life. I was a couch potato before that. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I, it's, uh, I'm sensing a theme here, right? Uh, would you guys agree that, you know, if you yourself wouldn't have taken up running, it would have been not saying impossible, but it would have been less likely that, you know, the children would follow, right? Uh, you know, the, the children, oftentimes, it's not about what you tell them, it's what they see. And when they see their parents doing something with so much energy, so much passion, and uh, it naturally kind of rubs off on them and encourages them to take it up. Right. So I think, it's you know, what, the... you know I think one more thing that really helped, right, is the amazing coaches community that we have, because we always see that when kids go to school, they listen to their teachers, not to their parents. Right. Yeah. So as part of this program, when you get a coach who is monitoring your, what you're doing, giving you comments, appreciating the things that you're doing, encouraging you. I think that helps the kids as well. You know, hearing it from somebody else always helps. So I would really like to thank all, you know, Vihans and Ryan's coaches as well to keep him, keep these guys motivated. Absolutely, absolutely. 100% agreed, 100% agreed. I mean, uh, it's, it's some of the things that, you know, Ronit, he pays more attention when it comes from the coach. There is a saying, you know, in our, you know, you know, if the water comes from the priest, then it's considered to be holy water, right? So it's just like that, right? He, you know, even if he doesn't listen to me, it comes from the coach. The coach is so encouraging. I mean, he's really blessed and privileged to have such an amazing coach, Coach Sharik, and and he gives, uh, you know, feedback. He's He looks forward. I mean, you know, what did the coach say? And then he really tracks that. And that's been a big inspiration uh, for his journey. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cool. Uh, so... You know, oftentimes we think of ourselves as like, you know, our lives are so busy and we have so much to do. But if you think about our kids routine, it is, I feel personally feel it's a lot more, you know, a lot busier than ours, right? Like they have eight hours of school, after school clubs, extracurricular activities, so much of homework. I mean, at least with us, we can say one day, hey, you know, I want to take a break. I may not go to work. I'll work from home. But kids, I mean, they really can't, you know, afford to do that they feel scared to miss even one day of school because then they have so much to catch up on. So if you think about it, it's very, very difficult for them. It's much more difficult for them to maintain this kind of commitment to running, right? So I'm very curious to understand how how did your kids manage to, uh, you know, comply with the school routine, the activities, uh, their own hobbies and their own, you know, stuff that they want to do uh, along with this huge commitment of 16 weeks. I mean, there's got to be, you know, something uh, really amazing. So, uh, Bharat, why don't we, why don't we start with you here? Absolutely. Um, I think, rightly put, with the school and after school activities, um, it does get uh, a lot challenging. Uh, and it's also specifically, I think, this the the second season that Ron had started. It's winter. Uh, the first season was a breeze for him because it's summer and you have like long days. Uh, so even if he comes from school, which is, you know, fairly, you know, 4, 4.30, there's a lot of sunlight. He still has two, three hours going outdoors. Ronit loves to, you know, essentially go out. So it was an, it was a lot easier the first season. But the second season where winter, by the time he comes home, it's already like getting towards dark. And that's that's that was a major challenge. Uh, so I think what we have figured out is on the weekdays, uh, the, the good part is... Um, we were we basically have a treadmill at the basement. Uh, so on the weekdays, he generally goes to the basement. And a big incentive is he has a couple of series programs uh, that he loves to watch. Uh, so all we need to mention is, you know, basically, you know, he can watch. And then he's just right there. I mean, he's just picking his shoes and then heading off to the basement. And that kind of works out uh, very good, uh, you know, during winters and then, you know, especially during the weekdays. Uh, weekends, since he has a little more time uh, across Saturdays and Sundays, uh, you know, he finds, you know, going out, uh, as I said before, he just loves to go out. Uh, so that that kind of has worked out very nice. Uh, I think part of the inspiration is, you know, giving them incentives. So, you know, li like do this, you can do that. Uh, and then once he gets into it, 
uh, the running takes over. I mean, he just loves it. I mean, he it, it's just the starting point that he needs to go and then, you know, for him to get to the basement and then get on the treadmill. But once he's on the treadmill and then it, it keeps going, I, I you know, he gets involved with that running running exercise itself. So he just loves it. So that's, that's how, you know, he can kind of manage, you know, in terms of some of the challenges, you know, coming back from school a little bit later, it's kind of worked out that way. Oh, lovely, right? And with this, uh, kids, uh, I mean, you know, with some positive reinforcement, some rewards, uh, you know, you just get through that little starting trouble that they have a little bit of inertia, uh, which, you know, we adults also have, right? Uh, but uh, I think, yeah, with a little bit of um, creativity, I think, uh, it, 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 you know, we can help them out quite well. Uh, Sam, how about, how about uh, Ishan and Soumya? Yeah, I think for Ishan, especially, it has been challenging. Uh, for the last couple of seasons because uh, he is a active student in science olympiad uh, so he, he in the last three years he's been winning uh, two years he's been winning state medals and all that so that means that he and he participates in four subjects that means every day there is a coaching for one subject so those four days are gone then two days of tennis so uh, there well, that's gone so long runs are not an issue. Saturday, Sunday, he finds time generally to run on Sunday. The daily runs or the practice that three days a week in addition to the long run, which becomes a challenge. And then there's a homework that he has to do. So one day I happened to mention that, uh, you know, one of my friend, Mike, what he used to do that he used to finish his homework in the college. I used to see him. We used to just hang around and chit chat after the classes. And I will see Mike sitting in the corner and uh, for an hour and finishing homework. He loved that idea. So in school, he tries to finish his homework. So that way, there is one less thing to worry about it so that he can have a science Olympiad coaching session and can go for running. So that helped him uh, a little bit. But um, it has been quite challenging beyond that. So the one of the reasons to he took a break in the current season, that cyber patriot that he's engaged in, that requires 20 plus hours of work per week from him in addition to school and all the other things. Wow. So that is quite challenging. And that's the reason I told him to take a break. Uh, and then he's going to, that the, that thing has ended now. And then he's going to start in July again. But we all have to come up with creative ideas. How to, um, we, we don't, We ha I had treadmill in San Diego, weather is so nice. So we donated it uh, because nobody was using it. Um, so we don't have treadmill, but uh, we just go out all the time running here, but time is a challenge for sure. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, you mentioned a very interesting point there, Sam, right? Uh, as parents, we always often tend to, you know, push our children, you know, you can do it, do it. But also at times you have to know when to pull back so that they don't lose interest in, you know, what, what, um, they were doing and that sustained long-term interest is more important than them complying on a daily basis right very so i true. think it's, it's very important to know when to just back off and let them figure out what um, is more important at that time so that they yes. can sustain that interest yeah a couple of things over there for example one thing one trick one trick was to do your homework at school that's one second trick we, we did was Okay, you can't run today because you have science Olympiad class and a tennis class. So, so two hours plus two, four hours commitment is there. So you can't run today. That's okay. Let's run tomorrow when you have time and move the run to today. So he used to run a day later or day early and move the run to match the date, uh, match that whatever. So it turns green and doesn't remain red because he used to get worried about this being red on his app. <laughs> So, yeah, then we, we pulled out a little bit because we saw I saw that he was getting agitated in the sense that he wanted to run but could not run and it became a, a, a matter of annoyance for him. So I sure. said, why don't you take a, a season break and then come back? So he wants to come back in summer again. Yeah, yeah, makes sense, makes sense, absolutely. Amrita, how did we how did we Han manage for so many seasons? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean. Mine was a little different case, you know, where um, what I believe is if you make any activity fun, right, or if you make it a family activity, kids tend to enjoy more. Yeah. So Vihan, when he started initially, um, 
I know, I mean, he was too young. So we had to work on some schedule, you know, that would work for us as well as it would work for him. So what we did was, and luckily, you know, it was, uh, again, pandemic time, we were working from home, right? So they also understood what kind of work mom and dad do, it, how intense it is. And still they take out time, you know, to finish their own runs. They take out time to help me, you know, uh, complete my run. Yeah. So what we used to do is as soon as uh, he came home from school, uh, just have something quick, a quick snack. And we all used to go for our runs together. So that helped him, you know, set that mindset that, okay, they work too. They uh, spend their whole day doing something. Still, they can do it. So why can't I, right? And then just because we were there to accompany him, uh, he automatically used to get that push that, okay, let's just go. Let's just get this done initially. So that kind of registered things in his mind that, okay, this is my schedule. I need to open final search. I need to check what is my schedule, running schedule for today. And accordingly manage my homework at school uh, or, you know, um, other activities. And other things that, you know, at least I focus on when it comes to extracurricular activities. Obviously, you know, kids are busy with a lot of things. We want them to learn a lot, you know, get into other sports, get into robotics, get into whatever it is, correct? But uh, I make it a point, uh, and it's it's for both the interests, for me as well as the kid, that, okay, every day of the week should not be, you know, that busy. Give them a break, you know? So if, say, for example, you're saying that Monday, Tuesday, you have some classes going on along with the strength trainings and the run, Take Wednesday break. I mean, break from other activity where, you know, the kid can just focus on the run or the strength training, then read some books, do something at home instead of, you know, sending them to some other classes or anything. Instead, manage that schedule after the break. So utilize Thursday, Friday, maybe if required Saturday, but we can again give them a break so that, you know, they are not continuously into that loop of, you know, one class after the other, one commitment after the other. Their mind gets that, you know, required break. They can do something that they want to do. They can do, you know, some activities that we want them to do together, either going out or doing something else apart from, you know, a scheduled thing. So that's what uh, we did with Vihan. Same thing we do with Ryan. So as soon as he comes home, he needs a push. So... Uh, I mean, I remember I had taken a couple seasons I had registered into the light program, right, where I knew that I have to pace with Ryan. So maybe the speed of 16 or 17 or whatever he started with, you know. So my primary focus was to make sure that I motivate him, I run with him, make sure that he completes his run. You know, no matter how much time he takes, that is not the criteria. It should be fun for him. It should be a me and his time together where I can talk to him, where I can, you know, motivate him a little bit, just say that, okay, Ryan, you can do it. So those things kind of, you know, help at least Vihan and Ryan. Now Vihan has, I mean, after so many seasons, he understands and he has grown in age as well. So he's a bit mature. Uh, So hoping the same thing will work for Ryan, but let's see. I mean, both the kids are different. So I'll, I might have to apply some, you know, tactics for him, but let's see. No, now wonderful. I mean, very uh, important points, right? Kids definitely need a uh, some sort of unstructured time. We as parents want them to do everything because you know we feel at this young age they can do X, Y, and Z. They can learn so much at this young age. But uh, I think some sort of unstructured time, free time, can. Uh, give them some sort of break and then they can truly uh, relish what they truly enjoy, right? And uh, and yeah, these kids are a lot very intuitive. They, you know, you we feel that they may not understand it, but like all of you mentioned, it's by observing us, it really, it gets into them that yes, it is possible, I should do it, my family is doing it. So I, I think we should give them a lot of credit for, you know, yeah. 100%. Yeah, I, I I totally echo that. Uh, I think the first key point where they're they're constantly observing us, right? I mean, rain or shine, you go out, it's really cold. 
um, you know, that that kind of really makes them, you know, even when they've come back from school, you know, we kind of did this. So that really motivates them to essentially say, okay, I can do it, uh, basically, you know, in spite of all of that. A um, couple of things along the same lines in terms of inspiration. Uh, I think it was mentioned by Amruta as well. I, I just wanted to reiterate that, uh, like Ranit, especially, you know, when he started the season and even till this day, uh, you know, like he got his Garmin watch, he started playing with it. He knows so many settings that I absolutely have no clue how he does that. He says, you know, this is the stats, I'm going to pull this, and you know, this is like monthly, you know, this is the way the trend is going. I'm lost. So, but what I'm noticing is it kind of expands the scope to kind of, you know, figure things out and tinker things out, and that, that kind of motivates him back to go back and try new things, and then when he, he kind of adapts that when he's running. So, some of those things uh, certainly help uh, as well. Uh, you know, the whole structured way where he needs to, you know, kind of have this proper gear, uh, you know, shoes, uh, which is which is which I think our coaches, uh, you know, advise that you know you need to have the right gear, right structure, right. So that really inspires them. So they basically get involved, you know, in really, you know, they take this very seriously. So that that's really helped Ranit as well. Yeah, and it's it's interesting because this brings me to my next question, right? Like, what kind of changes did you observe to your child's uh, children's um, health or attitude or personality or confidence level, right? So, um, so you know, like Sam, let let's start with you. What did you? What kind of changes did you observe? Yeah, so you know, uh, my kids were a typical. Uh, what should I say? Indian kids, little lanky. Uh, Oh, you know, and and uh, not very adventurous or uh, people who. So I realized that running helped them quite a bit physically. Mm -hmm. um, they became a little bold in venturing out, jumping from things. They felt strong. Um, Bala's lecture. So initially, Bala was the coach, first season. And uh, he, a lot of his uh, lectures uh, were useful in brilliant building resilience, right? So right in the first uh, um, 5K when he was doing for first season, he fell down on the final day and kind of his kneecap was bleeding and all that. Then he got up. I said, I said, okay, let's stop the run. He said, no, 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 I can finish it, I think. And he finished the remaining two and a half miles. Uh, so that give them gave them confidence about their physical ability, what is possible, what can they achieve. That's definitely there. Secondly, they I saw them um, talking about it a little bit, you know, bragging about this. Hey, I did this. How many kids do that? I think he was probably the only kid, or maybe one of the two three kids in the entire school who was who were running long distance at that time. So that also gave them confidence boost that I can do things which others cannot do. Um, so both physically and mentally, I think this gave a positive reinforcement to our kids uh, when they picked up running. Wow, lovely. I mean, yeah, this kind of resilience, the story you shared. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. And at the end of that run, you must have had this huge sense of achievement, right? Uh, so, of course. yeah, of course. And, and such such memories, they really last for a long time. So I'm sure he still feels proud about completing that run that day. Yeah, that day alone, I learned something new. I thought he was a little bit of a timid child. But uh, once I saw that, you know, it's like it's like people who don't talk all the time with the top of their voice. People don't think they're leaders, right? And then Obama taught us about steward leadership. So uh, you don't have to always yell at the top of your lung to become a leader the same way. When I used to look at him, I thought he was a timid child, but that resilience itself, uh, it made me look at him in a different way that, wow, he truly has the resilience. And that is what is required in strong personality uh, rather than someone who's just fighting with everybody on, or in the front of the line all the time and things like that. So, yeah, it, it was a really great feeling to see him complete the run after getting injured. Wow, so true. Great. Bharat, how about uh, how did how did Ronit uh, how did change him? Yeah, um, so Ronit's timing by the time you know he was he basically we went through the pandemic a couple of years where he was mostly restricted uh, indoors, so he didn't have a lot of chance to you know socially interact with a lot of friends in the neighborhood, like as opposed to his 
um, you know, sister, you know, where she used to really interact with a lot of uh, uh, her friends in the neighborhood, etc. So when he started this program, um, one of the things that we really, uh, you know, kind of observed is social interaction, you know, interacting with his coach. Um, you know, he has, you know, like Vihan in our neighborhood is kind enough, you know, he comes to our place, you know, takes Ronnie for a run and then they basically... You could see that camaraderie and then that that social interaction, which was a key essential point, um, you know, that Ron had developed. So that was a huge uh, aspect that we saw. Uh, and his confidence level in general sports. Uh, he loves to play basketball uh, with all the interactions that he's been having with this club, with, you know, looking at the podcast, looking at the community. That really boosted his confidence. You know, you know, he he we could see him like talk about. I mean, he never used to you know talk about his sports, and then he used to say, you know, this running is going to you know make me move faster on the basketball court. You, you could hear a lot of different angles, and then he started paying attention to news. Like you know, the other day, the last week, he came down, and then he started uh, you know this conversation. Did you did you know that you know kept him you know when that event occurred. I, I mean, he has he has never spoken or never followed things and then come back. So it's opened up a lot of new conversations. You know, he he's so excited about creating new PRs, um, and and you can see the you know the resiliency is something that you you you, you never observed. But the way they you know when he's tired and then when he's just ready to go, he says you know let's do it because you know he has this program. His coach has given him the feedback. He needs to really. So there's a lot of things that you know you can see that. Uh, develop development right off the bat. Yeah, it is. It is truly very heartwarming, right? When you when you have the child take up running or a sport, you know, to, for them to become fit and have a routine and discipline. But when it improves so many other aspects of your life, be it social, be it their problem solving capabilities or uh, sheer confidence, right? I think, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it must uh, feel really, really great. Uh, Amrita, how about how about Vihan, Vihan and Ryan? Um, so Sonali, what I believe is health aspect. Yes, definitely. You do any kind of sport, um, anything you do, you will see it for sure. So it is something that is obviously visible. But I would like to focus on some things or some changes that I saw. You know, in both my boys which are not that visible, visible, but, you know, it creates a difference in your lifestyle. It creates a difference in you, your personality. So running, again, I would emphasize the 16-week routine for a child is not simple, right? So when they started following the season over season, it created a kind of, you know, a, what would I say, a responsibility in them that, okay, I have committed to something and I will give my best to follow the commitment, right? Maybe not 100%. There are like up times, down times. There are good days, bad days and everything. Plus, uh, I know our coaches always say that not every day is same. So someday you might feel that you've done a fantastic run. You, you know, killed your PR and, you know, you're very happy. And there are other days when you're not so happy about it. You know, maybe you were tired or maybe, you know, you had set some goal, but you were not able to achieve it. Like Vihan sometimes comes home and, and he says that, okay, I did my run, but I'm not too happy about it. You know, so that acceptance that, okay, it's okay to set a goal and it's okay not, it's okay to fail as well, you know. True. So that kind of uh, thing at, at an early age that okay it's not always about winning it's not always about you know setting unrealistic expectations you know just decide something try to do your best if you are successful fine if you're not then it's not a failure it's just a new learning you know so that kind of attitude change uh, I feel that was a positive thing that I see in Bihan and now I'm seeing in Ryan uh I mean, there have been days when literally, uh, you know, in the starting seasons, when I used to pace them, I had to hold their hands and say that, okay, let's just finish it. You know, don't get tired. Let's finish this. Right. So it, it taught them that kind of commitment that, okay, I have committed to these things. So no matter what, I'll give my best and I'll try to finish it. 
so that kind of and plus they see that okay to for me in order for me to finish something or, or for me to you know uh, achieve my goal how supporting my parents are towards me so that also builds a respect that also builds you know a kind of you know uh, appreciation towards somebody who is doing something for you so these are some qualities that you know uh, are building in my kids uh they are patient it's not possible that you know you come number one all the time but the reason that you show up on the day of the race and you finish the race you know that patience that determination is something that i want to cultivate in them hmm. so that is what i would say that you know uh, at least i focus on and uh, that is the biggest thing that my kids have achieved plus uh, again i mean the coaches uh the constant motivation that they get from them it's a feel good so these are some you know not so visible things but these are very very important for kids at young age which will definitely help them build their personality and you know um, i i said uh, initially that you know uh, looking at us kids get motivated like be a role model but now i can proudly say that both my kids are becoming my role models so when i am tired i am dull i am down i see that okay they just came home from school they have some classes lined up but still they are doing their runs it's difficult you know for kids to do a 2 3 mile run apart from everything it's difficult so when i i look at them i feel motivated and i say hey what the heck let me put on my shoes and just get this done so i see the role reversal happening now and i am extremely proud of my kids you know for keeping me motivated to you know uh, make things happen really awesome yes One inspiration thing. truly is a two way street right and very great great points mentioned here all of you it gives uh, a true sense of achievement you start believing in something that you didn't feel you could do and you could start doing it uh, changes to sure sam go ahead one thing i just wanted to uh, say that i couldn't agree more uh, with uh, amrita about uh, one thing that this teaches us you know like any competitive sport it is good to play a competitive sport as i say because it teaches our kids how to deal with failure because you may win some exactly. games you may lose some games in uh, and and not everybody gets a chance to play competitive sport all the time all the kids however running can provide that uh, that atmosphere of competitiveness because you are always competing with your own pr right yeah. and and then you set a target for yourself and if they don't achieve it it helps them deal with that emotion that i lost and then come out of it and say i can do better tomorrow i think that is one of the most important thing that kids can take from this so i fully agree that this teaches with amrita that it teaches them how to deal with losses because success will not come all the time you know and every day very true and very true i want to add one thing sonali that to keep this practice i i know it is great that amrita can do with the whole family but i am i'm realizing that when i'm traveling all the time and my wife doesn't run uh my daughter feels demotivated a little bit about running so if they if if we can find a group of people in community within where we live where they run with other kids nothing is more demotivating and uh, is it, nothing is more useful in sustaining this practice in the long term um as much as having a friend run with them so uh, unfortunately we haven't developed it but i have seen others doing this very very well in boston and texas and other places where the kids run together and that really helps them they will continue running this in the long term and through the schools and through the colleges uh, if they do that no yeah, yeah great 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 point and um, great. actually that that's what brings me to my um, you know unfortunately the last question i wish we could keep on talking like this i'm really enjoying this conversation but uh, you know kids do get inspired they start taking up something and they are really really excited about it you know the first day uh, often times they start doing something and then the, the excitement kind of tends to fizzle out right on day one they are really um uh, thrilled and uh, pumped up to 
do it and then slowly the, the novelty tend can tend to wear off so what i would like to understand right for what kind of suggestions learnings can you share with other parents to first of all start that love of running or any such committed activity and how to maintain cultivate and nurture it further so i'm i'm really you know curious myself to hear about those recommendations and sam this time let's let's start with you so some of the things that we discussed sonali already and and yeah. uh, bharat and, and amrita also mentioned one is that creating an atmosphere which creates engagement with the child right mm -hmm. you know if if you uh, if the parents run nothing like it then there is a family affair you can absolutely do it but if if both the parents or one of the parent uh, um, doesn't run then okay how do we create that engagement and one of the ways to create engagement is that stay engaged with the community so uh, bala and the team have developed this community and if you can stay engaged sometimes to be honest all podcast and all the um uh, the long messages and whatsapp um sometimes it was repetitive for me because i had done many seasons before and those messages were repetitive because i already know what it means when when for example bala is talking about mitochondria etc so i have heard it but my kid hadn't heard it so i had i sat through the whole thing just to create that engagement so that they also listen uh, to it so we have to create that engagement somehow either through all the podcasts bala's uh, uh, messages etc we stay them uh, engaged with the coaches we have great as coaches and 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 kudos to them for uh, staying engaged with the kids so make sure that if your kid doesn't have a phone make sure you read out all the messages to them whatever the coach is saying so that they stay engaged they feel encouraged and uh, last but not the least is that if if it becomes um problematic somehow to manage the engagement it's okay to take a break once in a while so that we create a long term interest in the sport not just the you know uh, immediate interest very true so those are very some true. things that we have tried very true and having like that family that inclusiveness right you are showing the same kind of excitement even though we've heard the same message multiple times but when we show that interest i think the kids start sharing that as well uh great um uh, amrita anything from your side i mean i i can't agree more you know to maintain longevity of anything uh you need to take some breaks in between right maybe um a seasons break or maybe you know when you go on vacations uh don't push push them for you know uh, completing their runs i mean uh of course uh, what do you say destination runs is a beautiful thing it feels amazing but sometimes i feel it it might not be for the kids to be very honest you know because you're going to say for example disney on vacations or you're going to a cruise on vacations right where you you try and pack your whole day with lots of activities and everything and just for the sake of it you make the kid follow the running schedule as well it's not fair right so it's okay to give them a break you know uh, i i remember when uh, coach suja uh, was you know vihan's coach uh, she had said once that okay the only time when vihan missed his run was when his parents took him on vacation so <laughs> i mean i remember that he yes. wanted to do it but you know you should understand that he is a child right and to make him also understand that you know it's fine take a break you know listen to yourselves you make your own decisions what do you feel today right how you feel today if you don't feel like doing it what is the plan do you want to skip it do you want to do the run tomorrow or how you want to manage your schedule you know that you have a 16 week program you have committed towards it i will help you navigate through it but the decision will be yours that way you know you also empowered them to think you know uh navigate around their uh, around different possibilities and that way they don't feel that pressure that okay hey because it something somebody has said something for me just for the sake of that i'm doing it now right so help them take their own decisions that way you will empower them you will keep them motivated occasional breaks are must i feel uh if the weather is bad 
or whatever it is, right? Don't push them. Eventually, what will happen? They'll fall sick and they'll end up missing like, you know, two weeks of run, which is of no use. So think wisely, do the right choices and automatically kids will stay motivated. I, I guarantee you. So make it fun for them. It, it's it's not a punishment, you know, like any other sport or any, like they go out and play with the, with their friends outside, you know, during the summer vacation, whatever. This activity should also be fun. It should not be a mandate, uh, you know, on them that, you know, I have to do it because I have to do it. So no, I'm, I'm very true. try and do that. that. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, because as a parent, oftentimes, you know, we get into this pitfall of aiming for perfection, right? We feel that, okay, you know, yeah. if one day the child misses it, he might lose interest. He might think it's okay to miss it for the remain rest of the week as well. We often assume so wrongly. So, yeah, you make it make a very interesting point that it doesn't have to be every day and, uh, you know, you have to do it because you have time. It could be anything. You could be away on vacation. You could just not feel like doing it or you've just simply overwhelmed, right, by the long day. Uh, and yes, it should be, you know, the child's choice. We can help encourage them. But if we start imposing on them as a routine, then it's it's quite likely that they will start regressing from that. So yeah, yeah, great point. Um, Bharat, I'm sure you have uh, many, many recommendations, many suggestions as well. Yeah, I, I, I think, um, you know, Amruta, Sam and yourself have covered all the, you know, key key points. A uh, couple of things that, you know, um, I want to stress, I mean, because they're so important. Uh, the first thing is break. It, you know, it's absolutely okay for them to take mini breaks, right? It's, it, it's certainly very true. I cannot agree more on that because there's going to be downtimes. There's, you know, it's not always going to be sunny, um, but that's, that's perfectly okay. And, but on the flip side, they also figure out because of these, like Ranit, he has figured out, I cannot do it today because I had like a, you know, a basketball game. I can push it to tomorrow. So it's teaching them structure scheduling, you know, which I couldn't, you know, I, I wasn't doing this until I was in college. Maybe, maybe, maybe not, not so much even now. Now, incentives work, right? When I say incentives, real incentives, right? So Ranit has this long run. Sometimes he's down, you know, two, you know, vanilla frosted donuts does wonders, right? I mean, he's just powering through it. It's fun. He just looks so much forward for it. He says, let's, let's just do it, right? And, 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 and the joy of, you know, him thinking of that and then getting into this, that really works. And that's something that, you know, we got to kind of incorporate. And something other than that, like while he's doing the running, you know, getting them interested in other things like stats, like what's happening in the running world, what, what are some of the things that he can do, uh, you know, getting them with, uh, you know, even, even some of, you know, like that day we, we wanted to take him out, uh, you know, Mono, uh, Coach Manoj's house. Um, we, generally, they hesitate, you know, whenever they need to go out, you know what, you guys go, we are bored, there's nobody there. Uh, then, by the way, we are going to coach Manoj House. Do I get a chance to speak with him? Can I talk to him about running? Yes, yes. There, there he goes. He puts on the shoes and he's ready to go, right? So, a lot of these things really help out. And, and, uh, and, and last but not the least, I think just getting that continual environment where you know, you keep going, even though there are some days where he's not up to it, but looking at like, we keep continuing to run, seeing us being involved. I think that really helps out on the longer run, you know, he comes back and then he, he really loves to do that. Uh, and then he's some days he's super overexcited. I get a little bit worried that he's pushing too hard, too fast. Uh, but for that, I think, you know, coach Sharik had a, a fantastic idea. Like that day he wanted to do, he wanted to hit like really high paces I was worried that he's going to injure himself. So there is a trade-off that on one side, you want to encourage as much as possible. I don't want to say, you know, slow down. You don't want to do that because, you know, you're setting these new records. But on the other hand, I'm worried that he's going to get injured. So so Coach Shari had a very brilliant idea. He said, you know what, let him finish through, maybe during the last mile where, you know, there's very little chance, let him go all out, right? So that way he gets to enjoy what he wants to do. He's setting that. But then he's not like, you know, starting and then the chance of injury, right? So some of those creative things really work out uh, really good for them. Very, very one true. Last thing, one yeah, last sure. thing, one last thing, destination run, it reminded me, 
So we generally, in summer, we take a long two weeks off. And when they run, I didn't want them to be completely off for two weeks. Uh, but it's hard. You have sightseeing and all those things, right? So what we have created is a fun thing in the in the family is that, okay, how many countries have you run in? Have, you've had run in. So now we've they have created, got into the cycle that whenever we visit a new country, they're like, oh, we have to run here today. We can't do that. We have to pack something. We have to run. <laughs> then we, I can count and check the box that yeah. I've run in France. I've run in Scotland. I've run in... <laughs> Absolutely. So that that is help, so, so that they don't stay away entire two weeks out of running. In between, they can get at least squeeze in one or two runs as a fun run, and they remember it. Wow! Yeah, yeah, very very interesting idea, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> and Sonali, I just uh, you know remember a couple funny things that happened you know with Ryan yeah. recently. So um, usually, what happens is when uh, I run with him, sometimes he falls down, you know, and I just you know pull him up i say are you okay and you know let's just finish your run don't give up right so the other day he came home he hurt his knee because he fell down at school during playtime and all but he said you know mom i didn't cry because you know when i fall during my run you always pick me up and say that no let's go you can do this you know don't give up so i did not want to cry in front of my uh, my friends in school i did not want to give up on my run uh, on my playtime so I was good. It hurt a little bit, but it was okay. So I was like, oh my God, a five-year-old, how come, you know, he, he I mean, look at the, uh, you know, the things that these kids grasp from, you know, the day-to-day -day experiences that they go through, right? So these kids are very smart. You give them the right direction. You help them navigate uh, through things. I'm sure, you know, they will do the best to their capacity. So uh, yeah. don't underestimate the kids. They're really, really smart. One day Ryan came to me and said that, okay, Vihan is not listening to me, but my opinion matters. I said, okay, Ryan, what do you mean by opinion? I don't know, but my opinion matters. So, you know, they are, they, they know, they know things. So, you know, don't underestimate them. Don't, uh, you know, uh, treat them like child, make them capable of taking decisions and you'll see a lot of changes in your kids. Very true. Absolutely. Very true. We, we learn a lot of lot of stuff from them as yeah. well. I, I cannot agree more on that. Absolutely correct. Yeah. Oh my God. I could keep on going and, you know, would love to hear so many more stories. <laughs> Definitely we want to catch up with you guys offline as well. But uh, it's been it's been a very, very interesting discussion. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Like you all said, rightly said, um, you know, it does take a village to raise a child. And fortunately, we do have that, right? As part of our RHWB community, we have, you know, so many different inspiring role models. Now the kids are discovering their role models, right? We don't have to tell them, hey, look at this guy, look at that guy, right? They themselves watch, observe, and they feel do feel excited and inspired. And definitely a big shout out to all our coaches who work so creatively to keep the kids inspired, to give them the right feedback. So kudos to everybody. And um, I'm sure this episode is going to resonate a lot with all of the parents and all of the runners, in fact. So thank you a lot for your all your time. And uh, best wishes to all of your children and all the junior runners. And hope you all have a wonderful season. And um, yeah, take care. Thanks again. Bye, everyone. Thanks for having us, Sonali. Thank, thank you very much. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, John. Thank you. Thanks a lot.